and then lottery tickets. Can I get a couple of scratch offs? How old are you? You got your ID? 13. You what? I'm 13. You can't get no scratch off, babe. Okay. Aww. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's laughable to everyone here. The That's too idea bad. That ever expose a 13 year old to the dangers of a lottery ticket. But then oh. we arrive here at the gun show. Is yeah. that the shoot? Pretty good for you. I'll take it. Within minutes, the 13 year old easily and legally bought a 22 caliber rifle from a private seller. <laughs> there it is, boys. Hell yeah, brother. Hell fucking yeah, brother. That's crazy. And the thing is, like, that is fucking nuts. Like, let's be honest. Like, that's fucking nuts. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't believe this. I saw that there was this, uh, I've got to find this. I, I put it on, like, my likes. I'll, I'll pull this up and talk about it a little bit here. Let's watch. Uh, this is a uh, senator here from uh, Texas, actually. Um, his name is uh, Lion Ted. Let's see what Lion Ted's got to say here. Tragedies like the events of this week mm -hmm. are a mirror, forcing us to ask hard questions, demanding that we see where our culture is failing. Looking at broken families, absent fathers, declining church attendance, social media bullying, mm -hmm. violent online content desensitizing the act of murder in video games. There it is. Chronic isolation. <laughs> Prescription drug and op opioid abuse and their collective effects on the psyche of young Americans. You see, like, that's true. He's right about this. Why not just add in better protections for buying guns? Like, why, why do you not just add in that one? Because if he had added that one in, everybody would be like, yeah, that's actually true. Great. You know, like, this is good to see. And it's so weird to me to see this. Anything but. Yeah, it's like the floor is, you know, creating any regulation. It's just nuts, man. Because the NRA is paying him. As I said, if it was up to me. I would make it toward taking any money from a political activist group like this and then just taking any money from them, period. Not even being able to prove that it was acted upon. But if you simply take money from them, you are charged with treason. Whether it's lobbyists, a political activism, uh, you know, a private group like the NRA or whatever, I would charge you with fucking treason or sedition. That's right. And I would do it immediately. It would like I don't. I'm I'm amazed that people aren't out rioting in the streets asking for that right now. It's embarrassing, honestly. But I'm not doing it because you're not doing it, and you're not doing it because he's not doing it, and he's not doing it because I'm not doing it. And so that's kind of how they get you, right? So like, let's go back and let's listen to what they say. Let, let, let's let's listen to this again, and we'll actually think about like how much of this is true. And how much people like this, I think, just serve to uh, uh, divide people. Let's look at this. Treason has the highest penalty? It does, doesn't it? Tragedies like the events of this week are a mirror, mm -hmm. forcing us to ask hard questions. So let's go back and look at it. That we see where our culture is failing. But he's, I mean, he's not completely wrong, right? I mean, obviously, culture does play a factor. Absolutely plays a factor. You'd be a fool to say otherwise. Saying that culture doesn't play a factor is the same, in my opinion, as saying that having better protections for, like, kids getting guns doesn't play a factor. You know, like, it, it, they're both, uh, they're both as completely fucking ridiculous. Looking at broken families. That's true. Yeah, a, a lot of the people that, uh, there are these shooters, they come from families that are not, they don't have, you know, both parents and there's a bunch of, like, problems in their household. This part is true. Uh, absolutely. Absent fathers. Of course. I mean, that goes into broken families. I think that's just, it's fair. Okay, that's fair. Declining church attendance, social... I think that the declining church attendance part is stupid, but obviously what he's really saying is a moral decay. Right. Is that there is no sense of like overarching morals that are governing principles in which society exists under. That's effectively what he's saying. And that I think you could make an argument. Sure. Right. It, yeah, sure. 
Uh, obviously, like having more like moral relativism and things like that, where people don't care as much about things and there's no sense of morality in the culture. I think, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it would it would make sense that that would lead to uh, more violence and things like that. Media Lack of community, bullying. yeah, and, and also like church. Another another factor here is church is a very strong community for a lot of people and a place where people find belonging. And the way that people like this can sometimes be like de-radicalized or talked off a cliff by, let's say, a preacher or a rabbi or, or somebody like that. Sure. Violent online content. Dis um. Wait, wait, let me go back a little bit more. Social media bullying. Social media bullying. I agree with this. Uh, I, I think social media bullying is absolutely bad. And I think that, yeah, there probably would be kids that would maybe want to bring a gun to school or something like that based off of stuff like that happens. Like, and, and this is what I, this is the kind of stuff. And I, I, I'm, the, the reason I'm getting to this is that I, I want to show like how divisive these people are for literally no reason. That's all bullying? Yes. I, what, well, oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying that like social media bullying is, is like the reason why and like real bullying wasn't. No, I, I think both of them are bad. Yeah, all bullying. Yeah, 100%. Violent online content. Desensitized. Violent online content. Um, like, like World Star, for example, or something like that. Do you think that causes people to be violent? Do you think that causes people to be uh, aggressive, like live leak? Like, for example, like watching a, an ISIS execution. Does watching an ISIS execution make you want to execute somebody? Uh, probably not. Like, I, I, I don't really feel like there's much of a correlation here. I, I don't think so at all. As in the act of murder in video games. I don't think this is true. I don't think that... Uh, uh, normalizing murder in video games is a uh, is the case. I think that there are a lot of things that people do in video games that they wouldn't do in real life. And I think for some people, that's a reason why they play video games, is it's a way for them to express themselves. Uh, this has been proven to be untrue by like a bunch of different people, by a bunch of different in a bunch of different ways. Yeah, it's it's like look. I, I think they even had a chart for it, right? So let's look at this here. Video game revenue, violent gun deaths per 10,000, 100,000 people. So, this is clearly not, this is not the reason. Like, and, and this is the best thing about it. You know what's so great about this? Is it's a graph. And it's a graph, and it just fucking proves it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it, it just simply fucking proves it, man. I love it. Uh, it's it's so great, man. And uh, reading a book about murder doesn't mean promote killing. How is a video game not the same? Um, I think that it's because Ted Cruz is like sixty years old. And who do you think is at the is at the NRA convention? Other people that are sixty years old. That's it. Those are the people that are that that's what they're doing. And so those people don't understand video games. You know, they watch the Big Bang Theory and they laugh whenever they make a stupid joke because they're like, <laughs> that's like my son. He does all that computer stuff. I don't know how that stuff works anyway. You know, like, yeah, that's what it is. OK, let's continue. It's just like it, it, it's evidently false. Chronic isolation. True. I, I think so. I think that a lot of the uh, the people that commit violence like this, many of them are chronically isolated. This is something that's actually true for fucking sure. Yeah, it, it's not like this is. And what I'm saying about this is that let, let me let me let him finish. Prescription drug and opioid abuse and their collect. Has there ever been a bigger truth? I mean, really, has there ever been a bigger true? Absolutely, fucking lutely this is a factor. And especially about the prescription drug abuse. Yeah, a, a hundred fucking percent. And uh, what's this here? A nice pause face? Yeah, sure. And uh, absolutely prescription drugs play a factor. They fuck people up. A hundred percent, man. And uh, I'm not sure I understood the isolation part. Uh, hard to study chronologically isolated people. The counter to that, though. Uh, but with the shooters uh, in relation to school shootings. Um... My understanding, and I could be wrong about this, I, I'd have to research every single one of them. 
is that many of the people that committed shootings like this were on some sort of like prescription drugs that were used in one way or another to uh, regulate uh, their emotions or their mental state. Yeah, I, I think that there are a number of them that were like that. Yeah, SSRIs, yeah. It's fake information. Uh, outcasts are more likely to radicalize. Yeah, I think so for sure. And uh, they literally aren't. Uh, let's see here. All are on antidepressants. Anything but guns is the issue. Uvalde wasn't targeted school shooting. He was already fleeing police. I'm not sure. Uh, then they vote against bills to help with all the issues. Kids take Adderall all over the world. Yeah, I think so. And uh, Vox article took in suicide with guns as gun deaths. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I find that to be disingenuous as well. And uh, right, so it's the med fault, not the underlying mental illness. No. And and, and this is I, I think that this is what the um, this is what the problem is, right? is with people like Ted Cruz and also like, and I want to show one more of these. And then I also want to show the Ethan clip. And then we're going to talk about kind of what I think the problem is with this in general. Okay. Is that like, let's say you disagree with me on the prescription drugs and like the, uh, you know, like prescription drug abuse and things like this, which I do think is a problem. I, I don't know how many people have had this. I remember this was a big conversation like maybe five or ten years ago. Uh, I, I don't remember clearly what exactly was happening. So this is not a hill that I want to die on because I don't really remember it that well. But I think that there are some points that he brought up in here that are true, right? I, I would say so. Yes, they're true. And, and let's look at this. So here's another one. I had money in the bank. So why and how is being looked at right now? And I'll tell you this. Hundreds of more, thousands of more leads are being looked at right now because we haven't answered all the questions. We haven't gotten into the why. Okay, we know the individual was also mm -hmm. into cyber gaming yep. in that regard and, and group gaming in that. Regard. So we got a lot of a lot of questions are out there. And we're seeking answers, but we've got an obligation. We'll continue to update you when we find something out. Cyber gaming. Hey, That's right. In the, in the, yes. money in the bank. And uh, you can't abuse SSRIs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I do think that drug abuse is obviously a problem and people that get isolated from culture can sometimes do that. I think it's it's simple. Like these are obviously issues and obviously bad things. Uh, all points you brought up also happening in every other country. It doesn't have mass shootings every day. Um, I, I'm not really sure about every single issue, et cetera. But like, let me go back and I'm going to bring up another clip and we're going to talk about that one too. And uh, you see what I'm saying? For a large portion of firearm violence, the country committed by uh, Democrat strongholds. And, and this is kind of what the problem is with the whole conversation. And I've got one more to go with. Let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, where the fuck is it here? I'm looking to find... Uh, where's the video about fucking the, the Ethan video? I'm trying to see it. I don't know where it is. God fucking damn it. Okay, um... It's I I, just, I want to find like a very simple video. Uh, oh, okay, all right, here we go. So this is another video here, and let's look at this. So there was a big protest outside the NRA meeting, which was good. Do we have any insight into what they're actually talking about there at the NRA meeting? That's today in Texas. Yeah, someone should bomb that building. Mm -hmm. So there was a big protest outside that. Someone should bomb that building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. This, all of these are not helpful. The, the, these are like, all of these things are not helpful. And it's just, it's insane to me that we have had the entire public discourse about every single important issue being hijacked by this Bomb that building. and, and this violent online content sensitizing the act of murder in video games this is nuts can't make a joke now um i i don't know i i feel like i feel like that's not a joke that you should make yeah like let, let's assume that ethan was joking let, let, let's assume that he was joking I, and and we'll give him the complete benefit of the doubt I still don't think you should make that joke. I don't think so. I don't think that you should even make a joke. This is my opinion on these things, is I don't even think that you should joke around about inciting violence. 
Yeah, I, I actually, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think, uh, yeah, inciting any type of violence or anything like that, you should not make any joke about inciting violence. Uh, Hurricane? Hurricane, uh, listen, uh, unless you're watching um, fucking Jesse Ventura, hurricanes are not created by people. So that's a completely different fucking thing. Now, now here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. All right. See, you made a stupid comparison and you tried to do a gotcha. You're gonna get banned for that. I'm sorry to say that was a stupid thing to say, and you should not say that. I, I hate idiots that say stuff like that, thinking they're smart. That's an immediate perma ban just for having a stupid opinion and trying to do like a little gotcha, like a hurricane. This is not what I'm saying. It had nothing to do with what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, anybody that does that with a moron? Yeah, I don't tolerate morons. Anybody that makes a, uh, the, the one thing I hate about more than stupid people are stupid people that think that they're fucking smart. It's the most annoying and obnoxious thing. And, uh, which take on, uh, on Forza, it's not about him, right? Uh, all I'm really trying to say is this, right? Is that, uh, whenever you look at these kinds of people, and you see the entire discourse around this as being completely, uh, you support a depth joke about murdering and fucking corpses, but bombing joke is too far? Yes, it's completely different. Because one is being expressed to the public, and the other one is being expressed in private. If Ethan had a text message that was found that he said that, I would be completely okay with it. I would not really care. Now, um, I'm not going to ban you for that because that one is... Uh, I can see how this would kind of... Like, if you lack nuance, it's hard to... Like, I could see that happen. People don't get out argue against opinions. They try and flank your opinion on a related topic that paints you badly. Yeah, because they don't they, they don't know what to say. How is that different? Care to elaborate? Because it does not create actionable words that people can use in, uh, in, in on a large scale. So, like, what I mean by that is that uh, there are people who are going to perceive this in a way that is, uh, that is legitimate. Does that make sense? So, like, for example, whenever you say something to an audience, it's much different than if you say something to a friend. Because you already have an established relationship, a rapport with that person, they understand what the joke is, or maybe they don't. But either way, and like, let's say that person goes on a fucking rampage, and they do a bunch of really bad stuff. And then they find it the logs, and you said this to them, well then, yeah, maybe you would be liable for that, absolutely. But I think saying something to an audience of thousands of people was completely different than saying something to an audience of, uh, you know, a, a, a private conversation. Like, I, I, I do think that, like, in a very, very, like, almost absolute way, private conversations are immune to, like, any sort of, like, private conversations and, like, you know, things like this are immune to any sort of criticism like this. But public com public comics like this are not. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, private words of, pub of depth go on public eventually. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you're watching out of context. Ethan said to bomb it with love. Immediately said it was a joke and apologized after. Helps to know what you're arguing about. So he said bomb it with love. Let me see. Let's see. Uh, wh wh where's the uh, where's the video? Yeah, let's see. Let's let's see for ourselves. Texas. Someone should bomb that building. Thank God. Okay, don't. I'll roll that back. <laughs> roll that back immediately. <laughs> Everything but violence. Jeez, so right. Right. <laughs> Let me. Can <laughs> we cut back? I got a little carried away there. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The building. All right, I take that back. Thank you. It's a, it's a, I took it a little, Take, t no, I got a little passionate there. Let's roll it back. How did we go back in time? Rewind time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's protest that building. Let's bomb. There's no shot. Like he obviously meant it. He obviously meant it. Like, uh, yeah, he obviously fucking meant it. Because he says, I'll take that back. He didn't say that was a joke. He said he says, it'll take that back. Yeah, I got a little bit carried away. I got a little bit carried away. I don't know. I, I feel like, I, I, I don't know, man. He made a joke, like, bomb it with love. Where's with love? Yeah, I didn't hear that at all. Uh, Roll with context. Sounds like a, a joke to me, bro. So you guys think that it's a joke. Okay. Met with emotional protest. A love yeah. bomb. In Minecraft. It's so obviously disingenuous. 
This is so obviously disingenuous. It's very obvious that he meant that he actually he actually meant to say bomb it. He clearly said that, he, and that's why he added in a video game as well. This is something that people say all the time as like a get out of jail free card. People have done this before. Like it, it's it's disingenuous to say that that's what he entirely meant. He clearly meant to bomb the building. That's that's what he said. And then he walked it back and he said not to. Like obviously he did everything he should have done afterwards, but it's not probably the right thing to, to say. Um, the point is they don't actually want people to actually die. Wait a sec, I doubt it's a joke. What? Yeah, am I getting gaslighted here? I'm confused. I mean, listen. Here's what my opinion is. I'm going to make it very, very clear. All right? Because some people are getting in their feelings about this. I like Ethan. I've talked to Ethan before. He should not have said this. This is a bad thing to say. I don't think he meant it as a joke. I don't think so. Because of what he said afterwards. He said, oh, I'll walk that back. I got too carried away. He didn't say it was a joke. He said he'd walk that back. Uh, I said something in a moment of passion, realized it was horrible in context, walked it back, but his animosity towards those people was genuine. I don't think he really wanted them to die. I think saying something extremely emotional in the moment wasn't meant to be a joke, though. That's the fairest... I, I, you know what? That's the fairest way to say it. I agree with you. And I think that, yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually the fairest way to say it. Bro, it's not that deep. Yeah, it is. I, I think it is. Because I think in a world where people are constantly uh, gaslighted and told that what's directly in front of them isn't there, they can't see what's in plain sight, that you can see this and hear this with your own eyes and your own ears and you're supposed to pretend like it's something else and accept the reality of another person, I think that's ridiculous. I think this is, this is what the issue is, right? Is that with things like the shooting, etc., um, you have the two issues and you have these extreme positions. It's either you arm elementary school teachers or you take away all of the guns. Those are the two positions that you can have. You either take away all of the guns or you give the kindergarten teacher an AR-15. That's it. And I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm just fucking tired of it, man. Am I the only person? I see this every fucking day. And it's these nutballs that are controlling the conversation, going to these extreme fucking links, and then everybody takes the fucking bait, which to be fair, we did too, and then the original video gets a million views, luckily somebody was able to correct me and give me more information, and we looked at what the context was, it does make it a lot different, although it's still bad, but look at the difference, look at the amount of people that, lo get, get, that got fed not necessarily misinformation, but misleading information, one million. And look at the amount of people that got fed and listened to the actual fucking context of the statement. 24,000. That's a fucking problem. That is a huge fucking problem, man. And then if you go on YouTube and you try to find any videos about this, a lot of them cut right after he says this. Why are they cutting right after he says this? It's very simple. It's because that creates the biggest... Uh, uh, Fugati, thanks for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. To be fair, Keemstar put the uh, the whole clip on drama alert. Isn't that a fucking shame? It, Keemstar is the only person here that had enough journalistic integrity to actually provide the context. I can't fucking believe it. But all of these people are circulating around these clips and things like this, and they're not talking about the ideas. They're not talking about the problems with guns. They're taking videos, and I think a video, in my opinion, uh, a video like this is really fucking show- Like, this- This really fucking- I'm trying to think of, like, the way to say it. This really goes to show. Like, look at this. It's right there. Yeah, it's right fucking there. Gaslighting? Uh, whoa, did I just say something offensive? Exactly. Uh, got chats full of brain deads. I want to say that also, um, issue is dogma and tribalism. I hate it all. Yeah, difference between, uh, the original video and the added context video. Um, that he walked back the statement. He said he didn't mean it. That That's clearly what the context is, obviously. Um, that video is fake or illegal. Um, okay, let me ask you a question. So... In the case of things like a private gun show or a private gun sale or something like that, whenever there's like a very high chance of something illegal occurring and there's a financial benefit for that illegal thing to occur, maybe the problem is with the thing. 
Do you see kind of what I'm saying? So, like, let's assume that it, I, we are going to, listen, we are going to assume that it's illegal, okay? Because I think that I can even argue that it's still bad even if it's illegal. Because what happens here is that you create a, here. what have I always said about profit incentives? Is that if you give somebody a way to make money off of something, they will do it whether it's illegal or not. Whether that's writing stupid things off their taxes, whether that's speeding a little bit over the speed limit, or willing, whether that's selling a gun to a 13-year-old at a gun show where there's no sort of real transaction and there's no accountability for it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's only illegal if you get caught. Exactly. And so these people have a vested financial interest in doing something illegal. They can they can do something illegal and make money from it. Do you see my point? Uh, they're supposed to fill out forms at the gun show, but some people don't because of cash. Isn't that convenient? Yeah, isn't that fucking convenient? His parents with him? Um, his parent was with him in all the other cases whenever they wouldn't sell him alcohol too. So how does that make any sense? And, and, and this is kind of what the problem is here, is that a lot of people uh, try to, a, a lot of people, like, do, do you guys want me to, like, because I can look up and figure this out, whether it's actually illegal or not. Because, the, you know what this reminds me of a lot, is Lost Ark. Do you remember back whenever we first started playing Lost Ark, and I'm like, uh, you know, how do you get your boat? And I get seven different answers, and nobody knows how to get the boat, really. Like, nobody has any fucking idea, but everybody is so sure about their idea for getting the boat. Or like, oh, you have to hold down alt to separate these, so it's like, well, it doesn't work that way. Yes, it does. Try it, try it, try it. You have to try it. Chat spamming, try it, and then I try it, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's just nuts, man. You have this culture of debating everything mixed with the culture of not accepting defeat. You can tell it's a recipe for misunderstanding and miscommunication. No one wants to concede a thought. They would rather dig in than concede and work out a resolution. That's, I think, what the fundamental problem is. Like, I would love to talk to Ted Cruz. Uh, I, I would. And just ask him, like, why? Like, how many video games have you played? Like, can I tweet at Ted Cruz? Can I DM him? No, I, I can't DM Ted Cruz. Uh, that Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. And uh, Tetris, he plays WoW. Uh, Ted Cruz on Allcraft? Yeah, I, I wish I could. That would be great. Uh, Ted Cruz would 100% sit down with you if you're big enough? Maybe. Gun laws are different in each state, so all these people could be right technically. Uh, you can't talk to people like Ted Cruz. You talk to their talking points. Well, I would want people to... In my opinion, if I had to ask Ted Cruz anything, I would ask him this. Please defend not having, you know, more extensive background checks and, you know, more type of information like waiting periods for guns without using the words Democrats or the left. Do that. And, and you know what? I, I will actually take it a little bit more seriously because I think that the entire thing about it is completely reactionary. That's all it is. It's like, yeah, it's completely reactionary. And you just always say Second Amendment. That's not has nothing to do with it. That's not, that's not it. There's, off, there's always been rules for that. Yeah, he's your government. You can contact him and he'll listen to you. He'll just say Second Amendment. I mean, there's clearly got to be nuance with it, right? I mean, there's obviously nuance with it because you can't have a 50 caliber machine gun. So there's obviously nuance to the Second Amendment or you'd be able to have any gun you want. So you can't just say, oh, Second Amendment, that's it, because that's not what it is. Uh, I can do that. Background checks is great gun registry. I don't trust the government to have that information. Sure. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that think that way, but all I'm really trying to get at is that the entire conversation is being dominated by people that are extreme radicals and nobody is actually talking about any sort of real thinking about this. They're not talking about the issue itself. They're trying to polarize each other onto these opposite issues. Uh, I think the really I think that's what the issue is. And then also, uh, and I read these comments a lot in chat, and this is something that I see a lot, is that people talk about this stuff. And it's not really about, uh, it, 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 they don't, they don't realize that they're not really on a different side of other people with this stuff. And they're so polarized and like, uh, hyped up with media and shit that they never get the opportunity to just sit down and think for themselves. That's it. American singing guns being taken away as extreme as a problem. Um, this is something I've always supported. I think you should be able to own a handgun for self-defense at home. Uh, I think so, and uh, 
Uh, I'm not saying you should be able to have a uh, fucking like a autom uh, fucking automatic machine gun or something like that, but I think you should be able to own a handgun for self-defense at home. And um, if somebody disagrees with me on that, that's fine. Or a shotgun or something like that, yeah. Like, I'm not talking about like a military grade, you know, AK-47, but I'm talking about just a handgun for self-defense at home. Uh, I, I think that realistically, uh, police cannot always protect you. Uh, you can't always protect yourself unless you have a gun. It's called the Great Equalizer for a reason. And I think there's a lot of people that can't defend themselves, whether they're disabled, uh, women, smaller in stature, or whether they get invaded by like three people and not just one. Uh, it's unrealistic to expect somebody to do that, and I don't want to take people's ability to protect themselves away from them. So yes, that's what my opinion is on uh, on having guns. Everything outside of that, though, I, I think is kind of open for debate. Yeah, I, I think so. That, And I think that most people probably think that way. Uh, Divali, biggest police cow biggest cowards? Yeah, for sure. And uh, military grades farce? 99% uh, of civilian firearms are better. Agreed? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I can't imagine a world where my daughter couldn't defend herself. Yeah, I, I, I just, that's, that's what my perspective is. And uh, legalize booby trapping your home. Oh, have like a bomb at the door. That's a good idea. And uh, well, well Malibu, you get robbed by a gun, you die. You get robbed by unarmed. Even if you're weaker, you don't die. So the only time that people die uh, is if they get robbed with a gun. They can't be killed by anything without a gun. People get the shit beat out of them all the time. That's like, like you have a knife. There's like plenty of stuff too. Yeah. I mean, the rest of the world disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, again, it's just, I, I, that, that, I don't know. I just think it's so crazy to me, man. It is. Why not just use a, sh a stun gun or some shit? Um, I think that also the truth is like, if you break into somebody's house and they shoot you, I think you forfeited your life. The moment that you invade another person's home, you have in my mind forfeited your life. And I don't care if they kill you. I, I don't care. I don't care why you're doing it. I don't care what the reason is for it. I don't care like, oh, we never did anything else wrong before that. I don't care if you're younger. I don't care if you're 16. If they shoot you, you're breaking into somebody's house. You knew that shit was wrong. That's too fucking bad. A and that's just the honest truth. Don't fucking break into people's houses. They're, don't, you're not going to be you're not going to have that problem if you don't break into people's houses. Only in Texas, though. Yeah, and you're goddamn right. And so, yeah, rest of the world is good police force, so people don't need guns to defend themselves. Um, I, I, I don't really know about that. I feel like a lot of people, like, it's, there's crime all over the world. I mean, I don't necessarily know that. I think also, like, a big problem is that um, people view America as a first world country. This is not really true. Um, parts of America and a good amount of America is a first world country. But many of the places, especially the places where there's a lot of crime, these are not first world country areas. This is horrible. Like, yeah, th these places are shitholes, man. Yeah, it's like, I remember, um, where was it? I think it was like Trevor Noah on his first day on The Daily Show uh, went and he showed uh, some pictures of like terrible places because people thought they were in Africa. And it turned out that it was actually like in, you know, San Francisco or someplace in California or Detroit or something like that. Yeah, it, it's very, very common. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I believe the uh, the Glink latest video, um, what, what's this here? Uh, it shows that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, personally, you can't have a lot of guns here without guns being legal. Why do you think Gun Chaser as its name? I have no idea. But like what I'm trying to get out of here is this. It's that um, whenever you talk about America being a first world country and comparing it to first world countries, I find that to be disingenuous because America has such a massive discrepancy and disparity between different cultures and like different places in the country. Like the way it is in Detroit is a lot different than the way it is in San Francisco, which is different than Portland, which is different than Miami, which is different than like Mississippi. And some of these, yeah, it's just, it's highly stratified. And I think that a lot of the gun violence occurs in those lower strat stratospheres. Absolutely. And uh, what first and third world countries realized how we allied during Cold War, it's on a star rating. I, that That's nice. That, 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 that is, is that a very good technical argument that nobody cares about? Yeah, it, it makes no difference. Uh, I don't care about your technical argument. I care about what the, what the, uh, the general understanding of the meaning is. Um, the amount of irrational individuals in chat is unreal. Well, it's because people can't think about things without getting emotional about them. 
Like, for example, if, if I was wrong about one of these things, like people said I was wrong about like the drugs, like people being on drugs, I'm like, well, I'll have to research it and find it out for myself. Like, I don't know this. I remember reading this. I remember hearing this. But like, what do I remember? Like, really? How many of these people actually were there? I'd have to look into it and see. Uh, people don't really care because they just get emotional about things. Like, in my opinion, I've always said this, and this is a um, 20 kids guide. Why wouldn't people be emotional? There are people that die every day constantly. Like, people get killed all the time. It happens every single fucking day, man. You have to think beyond that. You have to think logically. You have to make good decisions. You can't use your emotions to make decisions. That's not the way it works. Yeah, every second. Yeah, that's the way it goes. It's just suddenly a bit numb more times than it happens recently. Yeah, exactly. Like, I... And this is my, uh, this has always been my, my opinion on things, is that I do truly believe that emotional thinking is weaker and a lower grade of thinking than logical thinking. I think that if people think with their emotions and they don't think logically and rationally, I think this is a lower form of thinking that I, to be honest with you, don't take seriously at all. I have no respect for it. I don't like listening to it. I don't want to hear it. And I don't care. That's all there is to it. So whenever I hear an argument, and it seems like it's an emotional argument, I just immediately stop thinking that way. Uh, we've been making good decisions, good to be murdered. It only happens here. It's not emotional. It's logic. Um, how, have we, how have we been making good decisions? Well, would, would we be having this conversation if, if we were making good decisions? Yeah, why would, why, would we ha why would we be having this? Why would I be talking about this on my stream? Like, just by, by the nature of this conversation implies that there's no good decisions. Yeah, it's just crazy. Logic is the only thing that we have uh, whenever we're hit emotionally. I agree with you. Yeah, exactly. It's emotional and common sense at the same time. Well, I think there is a certain amount of common sense, but I think most common sense is uh, is logical. I feel like the people die every day line downplays the weight of the event and the discourse around it. It only downplays the weight of the event and the discourse around it if you're trying to intentionally misinterpret what I'm saying as if I don't care that kids got killed in a school shooting. Is that really what you think? That I, I don't think this is a big deal. Obviously, it's a big deal. And if somebody if somebody legitimately thinks that about me, then I'm not going to try to convince them otherwise because this person is clearly already made up their mind. This is an illogical conclusion. It is not something that I've ever fucking said. It has nothing to do with what I said. So by the nature of me trying to address the argument that I somehow don't care about kids getting killed in a school shooting, I grant some degree of brevity and levity to that argument by considering it worthy enough to be debated upon. It's not even worthy enough to be debated upon because it's fucking ridiculous. Of course I didn't mean that. There's no way I meant that. Obviously not. So I'm not even going to try to argue otherwise. If you think that, you're fucking crazy. Uh, that's it. And uh, let's see here. And uh, you see the uh, the shit about the cop killed in the Buffalo shooting. You just fucking uh, invented a truck that starts runs on water. Please YouTube it. That sounds like a conspiracy. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, just because people die every day doesn't mean you should overlook the problems presented. I never said that. Yeah, I, I, I never said that. How would you be able to defend people uh, having handguns while being emotional all the time? It seems to me like a necessary force multiplier. People are already killing themselves normally. Um, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that people do have a right to defend themselves. That's about why. Uh, and I don't think it's something that's, uh, it's not a black and white issue. Uh, any sort of, um, like, let me give you a very simple answer, right? A very simple, like, thought experiment, okay? Um, how many people die every year um, uh, from auto accidents? Uh, but let's see, like, I don't know, probably like 100,000, a couple hundred thousand, somewhere around there. Right? Like, yeah, a, a lot. Five people. Yeah, a lot of people die. If you took the speed limit in every single place in the entire country and you lowered it by five miles an hour, I can almost guarantee you that that would lower the amount of deaths from, from, from driving. Like, I, I can guarantee you that. Like, 100 fucking percent. Like, 250 guy? Yeah. Uh, absolutely not. No. So you think that people driving faster? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it probably would increase it. So, so let me get this straight. People in chat. Oh my god. Of course it would. Yeah, of fucking course it would. Because there's a lethal force. If less people are driving. Oh my god. Faster equals safe. Like... <laughs> Oh my god, I love this. I love this. What are the arguments? Chat, deaths, not accidents? Probably both. 
Yeah, and, and anyway, so what I'm saying is like, obviously, any rational, reasonable person would come to the conclusion that if you lowered the speed limits by 10 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour, everywhere, the overall deaths from automobile accidents would probably go down. This is just what, what it would be. And um, I, I think that to a certain degree, you have to understand that like by giving people the ability to do certain things like drive their own cars, etc. And, and this will be an issue in the future, right? I think this will be uh, that being able to drive your own car will be, I think in like 30 or 40 years, this will be an issue that will be voted upon. Does an individual have the right to drive their own car in an automated, uh, in an automated society? And I don't really know what's going to happen then. I have no idea. I, I, you can't know. But I do think that it will be a conversation point. Hmm. Let's see here. Look at the... Um, look up accidents and death occurred by road accidents in Germany versus USA. So because the Germany has... So does Germany not have any speed limits anywhere? So Germany has like no speed limits. They do? Oh, so they do. Oh. Well, I thought they... Not on the highway. On some highways. So some roads don't. So because some roads don't have speed limits, what's the population of people that live in, in, uh, in, in Germany versus the United States? Like, it's just, it's such a, it, it's just so stupid. It's so absolutely fucking stupid. A 80 million. Yeah, the U.S. is like three times as many, four times as many people that live there. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Literally only on one highway, the chat is coping. Yeah, it's just nuts, man. Oh my god. As when they're proportional statistics, I'd have to look and see for myself. They have no limit on highways. Italy's the same. Yeah, listen. I I'm not going to accept the, re the, the rationale that dri like driving faster and not having speed limits is going to decrease the deaths of people driving. Like, I'm sorry... I, I'm, th this is just, like, you're not going to fucking gaslight me into thinking this. This is not going to happen. This is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. So, yeah, it's just, it, yeah, it's just fucking stupid. And, uh, listen. Uh, why not? Uh, Pepega, why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, let, let me see here. Most accidents happen in cities anyway. You're right. Uh, that's actually true. I, I, I think you're right. And only in certain places, the Autobahn doesn't have speed limits. I've lived in Germany for three years. They're intentionally lying to prove a point. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm not taking it seriously. And uh, anyway, I, I do hope that, um, you know, people like this and like comments like this and stuff like this is, is, is more or less like universally just like pushed away and gotten rid of. And at the same time, I hope that people talk about like more issues that I think people can have common ground with. Because I think that a lot of people would have common ground on issues like like the gun thing, right? Like if people, if there was like a defined way that people understood this right here. Look at this. We'll, we'll look at it again. Thirteen. You what? I'm thirteen. You can't get no scratch on me. Okay. <laughs> it's laughable to everyone mm -hmm. here. The idea that we'd ever expose a thirteen-year-old to the dangers yep. of a lottery ticket. But then we arrive here. At the gun show. It should shoot pretty good for you. I'll take it. Within minutes, the 13-year-old easily and legally bought a 22 caliber rifle from a Yo, Andrew, thanks for 10 subs. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. It. Ain't that crazy, boys? Ain't that fucking crazy? Wow. And uh, edited and dishonest. Hell yeah, brother. You're right. It's fake. That's fake. Uh-uh. Fake. Fake, bro. Here's the problem with it, right? Is that all of these guys that go to these gun shows, they're there to sell guns. Like, this is their job. This is what they do for a living. So they make money whenever they sell a gun. So because they make money whenever they sell a gun, it's in their best interest to ignore rules because it makes them money to ignore the rules. Right? I mean, that's the way things go. And the more unregulated something is, the more rules people ignore. Uh, it's just that simple.
Exactly. And so like whenever you create a situation, right, uh, whenever you create a situation in which people can be dishonest and profit off of it, you're going to have people that are dishonest and profit off of it. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, the video doesn't really work because if you went to a boot sale and someone was selling cigarettes, it's likely he'd be able to buy them underage too. Uh, buying cigarettes underage, I think that's a fair comparison, but I don't think this is the same as like buying something out of like a, uh, this isn't the same as like buying a, uh, you know, buying weed in a back alley. Uh, I, I don't find this to be comparable because this is done in plain sight. It's advertised to the public in many cases. I've been to these. Like my dad and I have been to shows like this before. I've seen them. Uh, I, I've, I've been here myself. And uh, you can't shoot cigarettes. Well, I mean, I think that cigarettes do damage people. They kill people. And they also kill people around them with secondhand smoke. Uh, absolutely. Can you kill 19 kids with a cigarette? No, you can kill millions. And that's why they outlawed flavored cigarettes. Listen. I understand that you try to use these, uh, th these like little smart, uh, little like little smart, like, oh, fucking whatever. I am like, I, I you're not going to, you're not going to get me with one of these. Just stop trying. It, it's annoying. Yeah. Chats that I'm, yeah, I know, man. Can't compare them. What the fuck, Asman? Um... god oh my god man like it's just so it's so surprising uh the arts of culture saying cigarettes are good for you also cigarettes and guns are a stupid thing to compare <laughs> there used to be you don't under oh my god how quickly people forget and how much they don't know like this is man Oh, wow. Losing it? Stunlock? No, it's just, it's very surprising because, like, I guess a lot of people just don't know this stuff. Yeah, like, cigarettes were, like, super fucking popular. Like, everybody popular smokes cigarettes. Like, everybody cool smokes cigarettes. Like, it, back at whenever, uh, I, whenever boomers were zoomers, cigarettes were cool. And, and they were, they were not just cool, they were what you did. Like, everybody cool smoked. Like, that's just what they do. Doctors recommended them. Yeah. Let me see if I can get... Is there a video I can find a doctor recommending cigarettes? Um, doctor... Let me see if I can find one. One of the old... Uh... Here we go. Guys, keep it in mind. You know, if you were to follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough mm -hmm. to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose. Mm -hmm. In a repeated so isn't national that survey, doctors in all branches of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country were asked, it's on television. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Why not change to Camels for the next 30 days and see what a difference it makes in your smoking enjoyment? See how Camels agree with your throat. See how mild and good tasting a cigarette can be. There you go. So... You got doctors smoking cigarettes right there in the office. That's what I said with your throat. Yeah. And that's what is propaganda. You can hear it. Yeah. Cigarette ads to pregnant women. Yeah. So to say that like, oh no, that's not how it was, bro. We got the tapes. We got the motherfucking tapes, man. And that's what it is. Big Tobacco was the NRA of those times. They just paid everyone off. Not only did they pay everyone off, but they paid for studies showing that um, that cigarettes weren't causing these kinds of things. Uh, cigarettes going to get power to uh, bully to un um, parent a piece of shit, kill 20 people in a day. Why, why, why are you not... Like, is, is it impossible for people to grasp anything more than a direct comparison? This is an abstract analogy. This is not a direct comparison. But why is it so hard? I don't think that I don't think that I'm I'm being unreasonable here. 
This cigarette uh, examples actually prove how harder legislation is possible and how culture can change. Exactly. Yes, and that's my point that I'm making. And uh, it's just crazy, man. Why are you so pro-gun? I'm not pro-gun. I, I, I'm not. Like, that's not what I said. Uh, I, I don't think that being pro-gun, having a handgun to defend yourself in your own home is being pro-gun. Uh, whenever I think of somebody who's pro-gun, these are people who want to have, like, fucking machine guns and shit. Yeah, I, I don't think so at all. And, uh, let's see here. Is people arguing with you, Smoke? I, I know, man. And, uh, listen, I I've said before that, um, a lot of people can get mad about this kind of stuff and, like, try to twist what I'm saying into, like, different ways, etc. Um, it doesn't- the fact you spend so much time arguing against Wall Tech Strangers really what's crazier. Stream used to have gaming content? Yeah, and the stream was, uh, was not as entertaining back then. Like, I, I, I like talking about this kind of stuff, and it actually, like, it doesn't really bother me whenever people disagree with me about this stuff because I just think they're stupid. It doesn't emotionally affect me because I don't take the opinion, their opinion seriously. That's honestly that that like that's really the truth. Like I read it and I'm like, this is fucking stupid. I you know I can't believe somebody believes this. You know that's about it. Yeah. So it, it doesn't bother me or drain me or stress me out at all. Yeah, I agree. Everyone, uh, impact one person buying cigarettes has less potential for harm than with guns. Uh, it makes the comparison stronger. Why should guns be allowed for purchase for kids whenever we ban a less dangerous product? All I'm saying is that both of these things are very bad, and one of them was legislated against, and they had, you know, like, good restrictions on it. A and I think that, really, the point is with, like, videos like, uh, like this one here, is that there is probably an element of truth to what everybody is saying. But there is only one actual reality. And in my opinion, I think that you can't look at the actual reality unless you can understand the way that people behave. And if you can't understand the way people behave, you're always going to misjudge future situations because you're basing it off of an idea that's not real. So for example, whenever I say that whenever you create a situation that it is financially lucrative to misrepresent things even if they are illegal, the chances of getting arrested are super low or getting in trouble are super low, then I say that because of that, people will skirt around or ignore or find loopholes in the rules to make money. I think that this is just common sense. And every time that you create a situation like that, you will have the exact same result. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, do, do, do you see kind of what I'm saying here? Is it like, yes, you will immediately, you will get the same result. It doesn't matter if it's like, was, and this is what happened with smoking weed, for example. It is like, it was very hard to catch people for smoking weed. Uh, it was very hard to like stop people smoking weed. People liked smoking weed, etc. People could make money off of it. And the government eventually just gave up. They just gave up trying to stop people from smoking weed. A and that's all there is to it. And uh, whoever keeps saying you have to be 21 on a gun, uh, don't know that you don't. Uh, I don't think that you have to be 21 at all. And it always comes down to the government being corrupt. I'll show you on, what's this here? Uh, people uh, like to do heroin and cocaine too. Um, yeah, but like weed is a lot easier to make than heroin or cocaine. Like it, as far as I know, like I don't know how to make heroin. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's much easier to grow and, and make uh, make weed than it is heroin. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I, not really. I don't. I don't know. I, I yeah. You, you, well, let's look up how to make heroin, guys. I'll, I'll actually I'll go downstairs and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll turn on some uh, some baking soda. We'll make some crack rocks and we'll see how hard it is to do. Right? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we might as well just try that out. Very like more long-term answer is actually funding schools instead of other countries and getting them security. Yeah, I think so too. I agree with that. Uh, absolutely. And uh, turn on your VPN before googling that. Yeah, there you go. What's your most extreme political opinion? My most extreme political opinion? Probably universal basic income. I think that's probably my most extreme. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the most extreme out of everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I, I find that to be an extremely, uh, an extremely extreme opinion. And, um, oh, also, um, any, oh, a any, uh, any politician that was found to take any money from a prison from a prison industry or any sort of a private prison and that then guaranteed uh what do you call it 
that then guaranteed a minimum amount of, uh, of inmates, I think that they should be retroactively tried for holding slaves. Yep. Yep, that's a pretty extreme one, right? Mm-hmm. Base, that's right. You send a fucking example. Yeah, who does that? Look it up. Yeah, look it fucking up. Yeah, I, that's not extreme. It's not that extreme, in my opinion. I, I fu that is extremely extreme. That is very, very fucking extreme. How'd you feel about private influence of government through campaign contributions? Same thing. Yep, same thing. Speaking of, of a UBI, the uh, Venus Project by Jack Freco. No, I haven't seen that at all. And uh, anyway, all I'm really trying to get at here is that I, I hope that, like, my point... I, I think that we got derailed a lot with, like, what I'm really trying to say with this stuff. But here's what my point is. My point is, whenever you have a tragedy like the school shooting or something like that, you have a situation where everybody is only talking about and getting involved with the most extreme opinions that are out there. The craziest, most reactive, most fucking off-the-wall, nutball bullshit. Whether it's Ted Cruz saying it's because of video games, or Ethan saying he's going to bomb the NRA conference, or somebody should bomb the NRA conference, excuse me, uh, and then taking it back right afterwards, which, you know, to his credit, he did do that. Um, these are not the majority of people. These are the extreme 5% of the population, and unfortunately, all of the dialogue and everything surrounding any of these issues is dictated by this extreme, disconnected 5% of the audience, and nobody else is thinking about common sense solutions. It's crazy. It, it, it's absolutely fucking crazy. And, and that was the point that I was trying to get at with all of this. Does that make sense now? Guns and easy ammo, easier to buy back in the day. Um, listen, I, I don't, I don't purport to know what the solution to this kind of a problem is. And if you want my honest opinion, I don't think that there is like one solution. I think it's like five things you have to do at the same time. Uh, that's about it. I'll read some comments and then I want to move on and, uh, talk about there's a, um, uh, there's this, this fucking, I, I can't even say it. Oh my God. I can't even say it. Um, this, like, I NFT fucking thing. Like, it's just, it's the funniest fucking thing I've, I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I, I've got to, I've got to get into that. All right, let me look at the rest of this stuff. I hate that people don't talk about people killing still have guns, but regulate a little Jesus. Exactly, because conversation is dictated by the extreme, uh, the extreme tailor and, and polar ends. And, uh, yeah, let, let's read a few of these comments. Yeah, the NFT drama. I know, bro, it's going to be lit. We're going to look at it in just a minute, okay? And, uh, let's see here. And, uh, you know, somebody's gonna come, but how do you plan to enact that? It would be supported by taxes. U.S. debt's already monstrous, not to mention if it was a thing. People wouldn't work, just live off it, make taxes, less taxes available. It's not feasible. Yeah, I mean, we can get into that, but I think it's a, um, like, you bring up good points, and I'd have to really sit down and, like, have that, that thing in front of me and, like, actually address every point. Because you're, you're not wrong about anything you're saying. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Um, let, let's see here. Uh, I'll read a few comments from the, uh, the chat, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on, as I said. Uh, why does it work in other countries, though? Uh, universal basic income or the gun stuff? I mean, I think there's a million different reasons. I mean, like, uh, other countries are very different than the U.S. in a lot of ways. And what are your thoughts on the rise of as China as a competitor in World War III? Um, I don't think China... I don't think we're going to have a World War III. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I know there's a lot of people that want it, and they think it's a good thing. They're the people that work at, uh, you know... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Blackwater and uh, people that are uh, military uh, stuff. And yeah, of course they want that. Of course they want World War Three, But it, it's not going to happen. Too much to lose? Yeah. Uh, if there's a World War III, everybody's, everybody on the planet's going to die with like radioactive, uh, y you know, like fucking residue. And uh, it won't really matter, right? Everybody will just be dead. So there, there you go. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, it's just, you know, it's probably a bad thing. That's why I think that a lot of people understand that, right? That there was like this whole comment uh, concept of uh, MAD, Mutually assured, assured Destruction, which was during the Cold War. And it pretty much said that, like, you know, if the U.S. and Russia actually got into a war, everybody would die in both countries. Like, that's it. And uh, let, let's see the rest of this. Don't be anxious you're dying. Yeah, it's just not going to it's, it's be a thing. 
a social worker, the hardest part of me is seeing everybody care and then forget about the issue one week from now. Trauma lasts longer than the media news cycle. Well, that's because people, a lot of people care, but they care in an abstract sense. Like they see something bad happen. And, and I don't think this is like really a bad thing. I think this is just how the human mind works. It's like, you don't really know a lot of the people that got shot, you know, at the, at the school, right? You don't know them. And so like you can move past that because you're not emotionally connected to the same way. And then you just move on to the next bad thing that happened. And also another thing is like, you just go from one bad thing to another thing. Yeah, proximity to the trauma, exactly. And uh, I think also you have people that make statements about this stuff. Like, usually I don't really talk about this kind of stuff unless I actually have something to say about it. Because I think that there are people that are like, you know, social media influencers and stuff like this. And like every single time uh, an event like this happens, they make a tweet about like how bad it is, etc. Uh, I don't really do this all the time. Sometimes I do, but I only really add in something that I actually like something that's actionable, right? For example, like how I said that they shouldn't use the person's name or their face. Like I honestly think that mass shootings would go down, especially the school shootings with like crazy fucking manifesto weirdos. Um... I think that kind of stuff would go down a lot if you didn't show their name or face and you never read their manifesto or talked about it at all. And it was completely confidential. I, I, I think they would go down. Yeah, you can't say their name, don't show their face, don't do anything. Research confirms that. Please link it to me. I'll look at it myself. And uh, does fuck you believe in uh, afterlife 100%? Uh, is it fucked if you believe in the afterlife uh, with 100% conviction, you don't feel bad for the people who died? I, I don't want to talk about that. That's weird. Uh, let's see here. And uh, civil war will start by getting against street crime by vigilante justice spread to being against minorities. That's when it becomes escape from New York 2030. Okay, man. All right. Well, just keep building your keep building your bunker in the uh, in the backyard, man. You'll be you'll be okay by the time it happens. Yeah, hopefully you'll have it finished by then. You build like your whole fallout shelter, your bunker, right? The whole thing. I know I'm spamming. Uh, spamming, but you can, can you look how Festion, uh, effective Australian gun control laws are. Um, I think that you can immediately rule out making the U.S. a comparator to Australia because Australia has no bordering countries. So I think it's much harder to uh, to make that argument with Australia uh, versus the U.S. Yeah, it's just it's the truth. There's no bordering countries to Australia. And there's nothing you can do at this point. Pandora's box is wide open. Yeah. And also, like, I, I think that here is what here's what my, like, long-term scale question mark. What about Canada? Can do it with Canada, though? Um, yeah, you can do it with Canada. I think Canada would be a better example than Australia. You're right about that. Yeah, I mean, Australia is a really big island. Okay, so yeah, of course, that's going to be different than uh, a country that borders like Mexico, right? That's where like a lot of drugs come from Mexico, etc. Like that too, of course, it makes common, it's common sense. And uh, yeah, anyway, so what I'm really trying to get at is this. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about before this? That just completely fucking distracted me. I, I, I really, I actually thought I had something really important to say, and I'm trying to scroll up to see if anything can remind me, but I completely fucking forgot. Yeah, I, I literally fucking forgot about this whole thing. Oh my god, I'm pissed, man. NFT shit? No, no, there's something else beyond that. Um. Oh, wow, Lost Ark being pay to win. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let's see if I can find the rest of this stuff. Uh, the U.S. gun roll, the, the manifesto. Oh, yeah, the school shooters. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that would definitely make a pretty big impact on, like, lowering that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, it would be a guarantee. No, I don't think so. But here's why I don't really focus a lot on, like, the, uh, like, trying to remove all guns. Is that I think in the future it will be impossible to do that. And the reason why I think that it will be impossible to do that is because the technology and the ability to create guns through 3D printing and things like this will become more and more prevalent and more people will have direct access to manufacturing in that way. Yeah, it already is. Well, it will become more like that. So I don't think that you can just take all the guns away and then this is going to be a permanent solution because I think people will be able to 3D print them. And I'll show you guys. Uh, let's see. Um, 3D uh, printed gun uh so take a look at this i 3d printed a glock to see how far homemade guns have come and so maybe we can watch this this is uh all of these videos are very very long but you can clearly see how this is going to happen you can already 3d print guns yeah there you go 
So uh, this kind of stuff will continue to happen. And so I think that if you remove guns and you remove stuff like that, I don't think that's a, uh, a, a complete solution because people will still be able to access them with no other interaction from any other person. Uh, is this TOS? I don't think so. I mean, fuck it. If this is TOS, fuck Twitch. Uh, there's no way. They're a single use one shot? No, they're not. Um, 3D printed AR goes full semi auto. Yep, no, they're not. All right, next. Yep, a any more? Uh, thoughts on restriction on ammo? Why could they not restri restrict ammo? You can make gunpowder quite easily. H how far away are people from being able to 3D print a bullet versus a gun? Watch the full video. Yeah, it, and, and also, like, keep this in mind. So, uh, yes, they are. You need special other parts made. The firing mechanism is from a real gun. Okay. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. Let's assume everything you said is true. I'm not going to argue with it. This is a video of a 3D gun from three years ago. This is a video of a 3D gun from five days ago. How good were the 3D guns five years ago? How good were they 10 years ago? They were shit. And so they've continued to get better. And are we all supposed to believe that that's just going to stop? Is that it? So this is just simply going to stop? The logic is flawed. Right now you can make a bomb in two hours, but it's frowned upon, so not many people do it. No, it's because of the information and looking up the information is harder to do. Yeah, you can make, of course you can make a bomb. Absolutely. But I think that having to make a bomb, it's very dangerous to make a bomb too. It's extremely dangerous. You're not informed at all on the subject, just making speculations as arguments. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, t I'll take a couple of these, then we got to move on to the NFT thing. Bishocks. What am I not informed about? Bishock, wh what am I not informed about? Because I actually, I want to read what am I not informed about? What do I not understand about this topic? Yes, wh what, what do I not understand? 3D printed guns need metal parts. I said it. 3D printed guns need metal parts. Uh huh. Okay. Now what? Yep. They cost 15k. How much did a computer cost in 1970? 40. There are computers in 1970. My mom. Uh. So like my grandfather was like a pilot in World War II, and uh, he flew airplanes as a cartographer after World War II, and uh, he taught my mom how to fly. And like my mom could straight up have flown an airplane. And because of that, she went around, uh, you know, like whenever computers came out, she went to different places to find, uh, you know, a computer that could digitally or not digitally at that point, uh, you know, be able to calculate different types of mapping for cartography. And because of that, my mom was on the cutting edge of computers, even in the 70s. And computers that you guys see, like I could go right now, uh, it, it, it would take me like 10 minutes and I don't want to because like my closet's like fucking, uh, it's a mess. But I actually have an old Osborne computer that has like the tiny little fucking screen on it. And that was like the third computer that she had. And whenever she originally, f she flew around the country for, for her dad, my grandfather, trying to find a computer in the 70s. And they were in the tens of thousands of dollars. So your argument that because the technology is expensive at the current moment, that it makes it hard to access is just simply not a very good argument based on the context of every single type of technology that's ever existed in history. Yeah, I mean, there, there you go. I mean, so... <laughs> well, i make up a story. I know that's not true. Um, exactly. 3D printing was expensive as fuck even seven years ago. Now you can buy a $200 kit. Yeah, sure. Are you talking too much speculation about the future, boys? It's not speculation, man. If you got multiple points on a graph, you can you can direct where a line is going to go. And uh, that's it. It's not heard of the internet. And uh, what's this here? Multi-material 3D printers will eventually be in homes? Exactly it will be. Yep, that's that's exactly right. Guns aren't that complicated? No, they're not. Um, I think that, like, what's the gun uh, that only has, like, three moving parts? My dad's like an expert in guns. He knows a lot about fucking guns. He uh, he can like fucking he can literally probably make a gun, and, and so yeah, an Uzi, yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, there's only three moving parts. And uh, what's this here? Slingshot? No, that's not that's not the right one. And uh, watch the third gun the third gun video. Uh, is this an argument for or against enriching plutonium in your garage? 
This takes her so far off the map, I don't even know where we are. I actually don't think this is far off the map at all. I am, am I crazy? Because I don't think I'm crazy. Well, I, I am crazy, but like, I'm not crazy about this. I don't think I'm wrong. I think this is what's going to happen. I, I, I do. I, I, think all, I think in the future, all homes will have a 3D printer. And in the same way that you can jailbreak, because, all right, so what are the arguments against this? Check Twitter. Okay, sure, I'll check Twitter. Give me a minute. Let's see, let's see what people are saying. And uh, I, I know there's people that want to get their two cents in here and, uh, and let me know what's going on. And, uh, all right, let's see if I can figure this here. Um, uh, oh, yeah, no, th this, these are like studies and stuff like this. I'm not going to, uh, to look all that stuff up right now. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to look all the, uh, the studies up. I'll look at it later on. Uh, I'm not sure about timeline. Eventually, this is obviously going to happen. Yeah. Even if you can't print your own metal parts at home, you can easily commission them without regulations online. Exactly. And I, I just, I feel like nobody can see what's obviously going to happen. And it's happening every year. And people just get more and more blind to it. I'm so I'm I'm so shocked about this. This is why I just I can't stop talking about it. I can't stop thinking about this. It's nuts, man. How about gun mount gunpowder? You only need three fucking things for gunpowder. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and, and like I think two of them are very easily accessible. Uh, people are willfully ignoring ignorance that contradicts their opinion because they think it's bad for gun legislation. Uh, drones will be a bigger issue. Drones will be a big issue. Absolutely. And I think that nobody, yeah, no, no, I, I don't know what the three ingredients are. I have no idea. I've, 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 I've literally no clue. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, who has any idea? And uh, search 3D printed metal gun. If you guys want to find a, a really good video for something like this, I will, uh, I will watch it maybe tomorrow or something. I know there's a lot of other things that I want to get into, so I don't want to spend too much time on this today, though. People are making gunpowder over a thousand years ago. It's not that hard. Very true. I think the gunpowder was first originally invented in China, actually, uh, with certain types of uh, weapons and artillery that they had. And uh, <laughs> bomb-making team. Bomb-making team. Oh, yeah, that'd be great, stream. Yeah, perfect. Uh, manufacturing your own firearms has been legal since founding the country. It can never be outlawed without throwing out the Constitution. Well, all I'm saying is, like, the manufacturing of those firearms definitely goes up in terms of quality whenever you can make it with 3D printer, right? Whenever the 3D printing is, uh, is, is that, uh, that well designed. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, it's, it was made for fireworks at first. Um, uh, let's see. Made for fire, firearms at first. It was? I thought that the first time in, like, any sort of the Asian countries... The first time that I can think of them using guns was, um, was it like Nobunaga or whoever the fuck he was in like, uh, in Japan that first started using guns and then that's why he like took over half the country. I'm pretty sure he was the first guy and then after that it became more and more common, but that was like 1800s. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oda Nobunaga. Yeah. I... <laughs> I, I had to like make sure that I said the name right because it's I think it's Nabunaga. I, I fucking can't say it right. 1600? Really? It was 1600s? Bro, I thought it was a lot more recent than that. Yeah, I, I, I guess I must have confused the uh, the time frame. Uh, but yeah, it was a long time. Popularized them. They were used before. Yeah, he was the first person to like really use them in like his uh, his armies. So yeah, it was definitely from quite a while ago. Anyway, um, I can go back. Yeah, they did They did import a lot of them. That was my understanding. But again, I, I've only looked at a few things about that, so I can't be sure. Anyway, all I'm really trying to get at, let me just make my closing thoughts. We'll talk about the NFT stuff, okay? NFT stuff's a lot more fucking fun to talk about than fucking guns and school shootings. So I think that people are going to be able to 3D print guns in the future. I don't think that they're going to be able to prevent 3D printers from being able to create guns in the same way that you can jailbreak every single other type of electronic device. I feel like 3D printers will be the exact same. I also think that as the technology evolves, it will become not only more sophisticated, but also cheaper. And there will be a point in time in probably the next 20 years or so where 3D printing things as everyday objects like cups and plates and forks and spoons will become much more common. 
Now, I don't know about the time frame. Maybe it could be in the next 20 years. Maybe it could be in the next 50 years. But this is something that will happen. So I think that by taking away everybody's guns and doing something like that, this will not fundamentally solve the problem because I think that people will be able to have access to them even on an individual level with relatively no barriers to entry and rather than, you know, like uh, having to go to a store or anything like that. I think that this will happen. And because of that, I don't think that just taking away guns is the solution. I think that you have to approach the problem at a multifaceted way. Look at isolation. Ted Cruz is right. Look at drug abuse. Ted Cruz is right. Look at um, mental health. Ted, uh, Ted Cruz didn't even mention that, of course, right? Uh, I, at least I don't think so. Uh, it, that, that's a big fucking thing. You have to look at everything together because I don't think that this is a solution. And I think that it's only a matter of time. And I think that time is getting, uh, uh, is getting shorter every day. So yeah, that's what I think. Uh, 3D printers will push plastic pollution onto the population, leading it be our fault, the earth failing to the whale side, wayside. There's a good chance that could happen, yeah. Mm. When I focus on reducing the amount of mass shootings, let's access weapons, let's minimize it. No other country has this problem. All I'm saying is that I, I'm looking at it from like a, a, a longer term perspective. Like this is what I think is going to happen over time. And I guess some people are killed by rifles 2020. Um, definitely better regulations, like raising age. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of conversation to be had about that. Um, I, I don't think that you're ever going to get the American people to vote against, like, not having any guns at all. So I'm pretty sure you've got to meet somewhere in the middle.